Hey there, welcome back to Z. I hope you're enjoying the sunshine today. But, you know, our sun isn't always as predictable as it seems. Today, we're going to talk about something fascinating yet potentially hazardous, solar storms, and more importantly, how to stay safe when one hits the Earth. First off, what exactly is a solar storm? Well, it's a burst of energy and magnetic fields released from the sun, mainly in the form of solar flares and coronal mass ejections CMEs. While these events are incredibly beautiful, they can also have some serious consequences for our planet. So, what can you do to stay safe when a solar storm is on its way? Let's dive into some practical tips. Solar storms can induce geomagnetic currents in power lines, potentially damaging electronic devices. To prevent this, unplug sensitive equipment during a storm. Consider using surge protectors to safeguard your gadgets from power surges caused by the storm's impact on the Earth's magnetic field. If you're a frequent flyer, listen up. High-altitude flights near the polar regions can expose passengers and crew to increased levels of radiation during a solar storm. Airlines often reroute flights to lower latitudes during these events. So, it's wise to check your travel plans and stay informed if you're taking to the skies. The first and foremost tip is to stay informed. Keep an eye on space weather forecasts, just like we check regular weather forecasts. Websites like NASA's Space Weather Prediction Center provide real-time updates on solar activity. Being aware of the situation is crucial in taking precautionary measures. Electronic satellites can abruptly lose control. Worldwide, there are voltage surges and, in certain spots, total blackouts. Because scientists have limited information on this extraordinary solar behavior, we are still unable to precisely anticipate the path or timing of the next geomagnetic storm. One such occurrence occurred in July of 2012, but fortunately it only missed us by a narrow margin of nine days. To give you an idea of what almost transpired, allow me to briefly review some astronomical basics. Since our star is nothing more than a massive ball of molten gases that is continually moving, solar storms are a sequence of effects that occur on Earth after specific events occur on the Sun. These occurrences occur more frequently than you may believe. Solar flares and coronal mass ejections are two of the bursts of energy that our Sun releases before a solar storm can start. These phenomena send electrical charges and magnetic field waves toward Earth at an astounding speed of about 3 million miles per hour. When these solar storms reach our planet, we can see displays of the northern lights in areas near the Arctic Circle, but they can also interfere with satellites or other electronic communication systems. Certain solar storms may be hazardous, and in 2012, we were on the verge of a particularly strong one that would have had catastrophic consequences. Astronomers' research indicates that it is the most powerful in over 150 years, so how did we manage to escape? Did we have anything to do with it, or was it just a coincidence? We do, however, know that in late July 2012, one of those coronal mass ejections did indeed strike Earth's orbit. Since our planet is now literally surrounded by electric objects, such as our cars and phones, you may be wondering what would happen if they all suddenly stopped working. Well, as it happens, these intense solar storms are dangerous to a variety of technological objects. Here's how they work, our planet had already left that specific location because it was on its scheduled trajectory around the Sun. Solar storms begin with a solar flare or explosion, after which UV and X-rays reach Earth at the speed of light. Among the side effects are radio blackouts and misplaced GPS signals. The effects can also last for minutes or even hours after energetic particles enter our atmosphere. These particles move slightly slower than light, but they can electrically shock Earth satellites and damage their components. Finally, about a day later, clouds of magnetized plasma enter our atmosphere and can cause massive power blackouts that can virtually paralyze everything that uses an electrical plug. Since most city water supplies these days rely on electric pumps, we might not even be able to flush our toilets. The effects of these geomagnetic storms would differ depending on where they are on Earth, though solar storms are interesting in and of themselves. Recent research suggests that geology plays a significant role in this. We're going back in time, 4.6 billion years, to a time when the Moon hadn't even formed. To put it mildly, our solar system looked very different then than it does now. Fasten your seatbelts. Hundreds of new planets began to form around the new Sunday planets like our own Earth. 
Venus or Mars were still hurtling around the cosmos back in the 1970s an astronomer named Donald R. Davis developed a theory that said the moon was born when another planet hit a newly formed Earth about 4.5 billion years ago he also indicated that it might have been the size of Mars and later named this planet Thea it's difficult to imagine what that impact might have looked like even with the equipment. We have these days the astronomers suggested the giant impact hypothesis trying to piece. Together this mystery after running into our planet the outer rocky layers of both Earth and Thea were projected into a circle of cosmic matter out of this debris what we now know as the moon was born the Earth's core has apparently consumed Thea's iron core that is if it had any our planet also got into the position it occupies today this way it became more susceptible to geomagnetic storms back then. Scientists didn't know much about what might have happened to Thea other than the fact that it had produced our sole known natural satellite. It took them several years to come up with an innovative theory that completely changed our understanding of the planet. What's left over is concealed beneath two continent-sized layers of rock located deep within our planet. This theory also explains why the moon is so dry and lacks a significant iron core. But why is geology so important in relation to geomagnetic storms? Well, new research has shown that the kind of rocks beneath your feet can have an impact on how well your city recovers from severe geomagnetic storms. The most famous event of this magnitude was the Carrington event, which occurred back in September 1859. Some types of rocks, like sedimentary rocks, have more space filled with water, making them electrically conductive. On the other hand, people living in the New England highlands may be more at risk of major disruptions during such storms, while those in the mid-Atlantic coastal plain have less to worry about because of what's hidden beneath their cities. How did we know how scary these storms were? Well, this wasn't the first time it happened. Solar storms have amazed the astronomical community for many years now. It gave us a sneak peek at what the power of the sun is, to say the least. They named it after an English astronomer, Richard Carrington, who witnessed the solar flares himself. The power of that solar storm was something humans had never experienced before. The strong geomagnetic storm caused the northern lights as far down south as the territory of Hawaii. On the morning of September 1, 1859, Richard Carrington made his way into his private observatory located outside of London. He opened the observatory dome to have a complete view of the sky and directed his telescope to the location of the sun. He saw a bunch of huge dark spots that gleamed on the surface of our stock. Shortly enough, Carrington noticed two enigmatic areas that were intensely bright and full of white light bursting out from the sunspots. They disappeared five minutes later, but the effects carried on all across the Earth's surface. Communications all around the world started to malfunction. Flashes of light started to burst from telegraph machines, disturbing the operators and even setting papers on fire brightly colored auroras started to appear at night. Skies all over the world are making confused birds chirp at night. Some people even began their daily activities since they mistakenly thought the day had already begun. These days, our planet is laced with a mega information web, so the impact of such a solar storm would be even greater. Messier, back in the 1800s, the telegraph system was just starting out, but this Victorian internet was an important way of sending news and private messages. Even in the United States, telegraph operators had noticed local interruptions because of thunderstorms and northern lights before, but the Carrington event and its effects were something they had never seen before. A lot of telegraph lines in North America became useless. One telegraph manager based in Pittsburgh even recalled that the currents flowing through the wires were so strong that their platinum contacts were in danger of melting. Another example was that of a telegraph operator located in Washington, D.C., named Frederick W. Royce, who was heard as his forehead touched a ground wire. Samples taken from the Earth's icy locations tell us that the Carrington effect was twice as big as any other solar storm experienced in the last 500 years. It's very difficult to imagine what the impact of a storm of that magnitude might be today, but based on a 2008 report drafted by the National Academy of Sciences, it might cost us between $1 trillion and $2 trillion in damages. However, there are specific actions we can take to lessen the impact, such as purchasing a generator or setting up a backup energy system. Provide additional energy in the form of solar or wind turbines so that we can outfit our homes with surge protectors that attach to our electrical panels and shield us from power surges caused by lightning. The easiest fix of them all is to just unplug every gadget you aren't using at that specific time. 
Since they aren't powered by a source, surges cannot impact them. 